Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged Plus. I'm joined today by Matt Bellington from Jigsaw. And we are standing in front of three square things on uh, stands. And I think it's fair to say to the lay person, it's not immediately apparent what these do. Mm -hmm. But tell me about Jigsaw. Why do you started it up and what, what the aim of Jigsaw is? Yeah, we started up quite by accident. We, uh, we encountered a problem when my dad moved into his first apartment over in, in Sutton Coalfield. He was coming back from, from being a, away in Spain and he had these massive storage heaters in this nice apartment and he wanted them gone. Um, so it's his fault. He then spent the next, I think it was a good few months, looking for other options to put in there instead and he stumbled upon infrared heating. Right. Um, bought into those, bought uh, a few different panels to try. The electrician didn't know what they were, where to put them, how to control them. Uh, and when he had them installed, put in, they worked absolutely fantastically well. And we just sat down that day and said, there's a business in this. Why is no one else looking at this project? And, and, and we sat down and, and that was nearly five years ago that we actually put that together. Um, and from that point, we've started installing throughout the UK, uh, through Spain. We've got products going out to Sweden. Uh, and all these products now are our own. We manufacture these ourselves. And they're manufactured in this country? Yeah, everything's manufactured in the, right. the UK. So wow. It's, uh, it's moved quite quickly. Yeah. So can you, I mean, explain to me how infrared heating works? I, do, I mean, it's sort of all the terms in that I'm familiar with, infrared mm -hmm. and heating, but I don't yeah. know. This is completely new yeah. to me. They're extremely simple. Inside of each one of these is a heat map. There's a slightly different one between the panel and the glass. But in essence, it's a wire-based heat mat on that one. As soon as you pass electricity through it, it creates the infrared heat, and that just literally comes out the front of the, right. the heater itself. The, the glass uses a slightly different uh, infrared mat. It's a silicon-based mat that's etched, but it's still the same, same issue. And we do these in a range of different sizes and wattages as well. So we start from a 400 watt, which is a square ceiling tile panel. Um, we go up to the 800, then we've got the 1000 watt uh, picture there, right. and we do a 1500 watt as well. Wow. So we can mix and match the panels depending on the room, room size and where they're going. But I mean that, as a, as a, you know, if you think of what we're all used to, which is a, a, a wet heating system, mm. a, ra a radiator, it's a big thick thing with ridges on it, it's very mm. noticeable aesthetically. Yep. That, you could, if you had a white wall, you could put that on the white wall, you basically wouldn't even know it was there. You would, that's that's the, the, the whole point with yeah. it really. We, we see a lot of issues with people putting furniture right against the radiators because there is no other room to do yeah. it with the furnitures in these spaces. So these can actually be put on the ceiling. So if we don't want them on the walls, we can actually mount them to the ceiling and they're right. actually more efficient by doing that as well. Because the infrared comes straight down and it heats the furniture, the person, and the fabric of the building as well. So it's, it's an cl even cleaner way to do that. Right, the things I'm familiar with, air source heating or heat, heat mm -hmm. batteries, electric yeah. boilers, which all are running in a sense if you're then using a wet heating system, you're heating water that mm -hmm. by yeah. natural case is cold and you've got to heat it up yeah. and then pump it around that system. Mm -hmm. And I'm, as soon as I saw this, I thought, oh, I've never thought about the efficiency of that system. Not terribly efficient way of doing things. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's really not the most efficient way. Yeah. Uh, and what we're trying to, to work with a lot more is we are heating rooms that are being used, not the whole space. Yeah. We can hold the space to... 14, 15 degrees as a, as a nominal temperature. And if we walk into a kitchen or a living room and we want to go use the bedroom, we just turn that room on. Right. The system knows that someone's in that room and it responds within a couple of seconds. Right. And then it can start charging that room with energy. Whatever we need, so that's an 800 watt panel. So a reasonable size room, bedroom, that would be fine. In. So we're just targeting that room with that 800 watts for the 10, 15 minutes it might need to bring it back up to 10. Wow. So, so it's not, you're not leaving it on all day no, or for we don't four hours or something? It's we just, don't need to because it's wow. so quick in response. This panel takes around about five minutes to warm up. It's only got 1.2 mil of aluminium in the front of it. Right. The panel responds extremely quickly and it just literally gets the energy into that room. Wow. Uh, there's, there's nothing to heat up prior. There's no floor to yeah. heat up. There's, 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 no, no there's no to pipe that leads to it. There's no pipe, exactly. There's, there's no metal rad to, to warm up. It's just very instant. Right. The glass take a little bit longer because they're a lot thicker. The, the mirrors are six mil thick. The, the standard glass is four mil thick. Right. But we're still only talking about three to four minutes longer before it's doing the same. Yeah. So it's very quick, very rapid. So if you have the mirror in your bathroom, I'm just thinking of, you know, in our bathroom, there's a mirror, which I don't ever look at because it's always covered in steam. Yeah. Does it, it well, yeah, the, if it's the, already warm, it presumably doesn't get misty. Exactly. The, the temperature of the mirrors will ensure that it will never get any uh, mist condensation right. or anything within the building. 
Uh, another clever thing with these panels is what they do, they actually heat the fabric of the space itself. So you won't get mold or mildew or anything building up because if the walls are hot, yeah. you won't get the condensation on that part of the yeah. building. So it stops things like that, which is good for people with allergens. Yes, yeah. But then, so what would a panel like this, this would presumably be out of the three, the cheaper, the cheaper option is, out yeah. of the three for yeah. your sort of your average room. Yeah. I mean, what, how much do these cost? Well, they start from 395, the small panels, uh, retail prices. Uh, the, the equipment can go up to 795 for the 1200 watt, which is uh, another 30 centimetres on top of that. Right. But, but that panel, for in, in essence, would, would easily do a three by three room, no problem at all. So you don't need multiples of them. Right. The 1200 watt panel will probably do a four by five room. Um, if we're talking about passive houses, which are extremely efficient, we need less and less heating equipment, yeah. so the cost actually comes down. Yeah. So we can do a whole property for, for around about £4,000 for a smaller property. Right. Um, large properties, four or five bedrooms, we, we're doing quotes that are around about eight to 9,000 at the moment, maybe a little bit more, depending on the age of the property. Yeah. But the, the passive houses will, will probably need a, a panel half that size for, for a decent sized bedroom. I mean, just from the point of view of building a new build, you build the house, you know, you've got to insulate it up to a point. You should insulate it a lot better than they are, and the windows and doors need to be all that. But then you, you're going to put in a gas boiler with the, the pipe that goes to the gas boiler, all the hassle of all the pipe work, putting in the radiators in a brand new Like, for goodness sake, you don't need to do any of that. That's a wire and a, and a mounting bracket, and you've got a radiator. I mean, it's kind of... Yeah, it's, it's, it is a shame when you see new buildings going up and they're still putting in the gas system. Yeah. It, it is on its last legs. We, yes, we know from so. 2025, Electric will become the main source of, yeah. of fuel for, for heating properties. We're already in talks with big developers um, that are waiting for the changes in the SAP uh, assessment protocols for, for heating buildings. That is coming out in 2022, we know that. So very quickly, electric is now seen as a greener heat. Yeah. As soon as that is released, developers can say, I can put that panel in my building with solar and get a much better EPC score. So that will happen from early 2022. The developers are still looking at gas because it's what they know. Yeah. But we are already in talks with some quite large companies that are looking like you to, to find a bit of an issue. Where, where would the problem be with installing this? Yeah. And when you say you do this, this and this, they're like, okay, that's gonna save days. Yeah. That really is gonna save days to be able to put that in. And it's a much more desirable product. Yeah. It's interesting to see people come into the, like the showrooms or the shows and they have a look at these and like, wow, that's warm, isn't it? What is it? And then you tell them like, Look at it a little they bit. Step back a bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But it's exactly the same as what the sun does. Right. It's a completely natural system. Our bodies are actually evolved to, to use to it for it to warm us up. Right. Uh, and when you stand next to someone that feels warm, that's what you're feeling, the infrared radiation. Right. So it's a completely natural product. Right. Um, and there's studies that show that when you stood next to one of these things or in the sun, you, your blood vessels open up, so your blood flows better, your blood pressure lowers. Right. Uh, so it's a much better way to, to heat a property because it, it's healthier. It right. doesn't circulate all the air that's in the environment as well. Right. There's still some air movement, but it's not yeah. on like a normal convection system, which is constantly rotating the air. So people with allergies, asthmas, this is a much cleaner way of doing right. it. So Matt, is there, is there any sort of government support for, for transferring your house to electric heating? Unfortunately, not for infrared at the moment. This is why we're, we're spending quite a bit of time talking to government uh, and bays especially. Uh, for the clean heat directive. Um, it's still seen as a new tech, but even though it's been out since about 1914 or whenever it was invented, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's nowhere near new. Uh, I mean, I remember the old bar heaters in, in grandparents' bathrooms yes. and things like that. They're, obviously, we're just repurposing the, the same technology and the, and the process into these. Uh, but yet again, it's something that we are in discussion with them um, because they can see the potential of, of what this stuff can do for, for a wider demographic of people, should we say. It's not just about uh, people that can afford a heat pump. It's about people that are living in apartments or flats that can't have green energy, but really they can have a better control system and a better heating system to yeah. reduce their bills by a simple swap over. I mean, if you're talking about clean heat, that's a pretty clean form of heat. I mean, yeah. that, that is on at the moment. And I can feel the heat. Like, yeah. right, I can feel it there. It's amazing. Yeah. That is yeah. incredible. Yeah. 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 It, it, it is difficult to explain to someone that's not physically experienced it. Yes. And if we put a normal convection heater, I mean, there's a ceiling in here, it's probably about 14, 15 metres yeah. high. You wouldn't feel it. Uh. Unless you put your hand directly over it, it wouldn't work. It would just disappear into the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, and this is why we do religious buildings and churches, because we can direct it to a, a specific pew if we wanted to, right. a, a specific seating area. Um, 
and it's directional, it's light essentially. So we're just directing the light to where it's been needed. Because that's one of the things that's really obvious how easy it would be to, to implement, you know, to install this alongside all those other, so you've got your hot water, you've then got your heating, you've got your energy coming in off the solar panels, you store it in a battery or you, in the heat, it's just like, it, it mm -hmm. fits in really neatly with that. Exactly, and the whole system's modular as well. You don't have to do the whole property with everything at once. You can come back and do a room or, or do a floor and then come back and then add the cylinder at a later date and the battery at a later date. Right. So you're not forced to upgrade everything in one hit. It's a case of which would work best for you early on and then swap and change as you saw fit. And then you did mention earlier that it would so it heats the, the, the fabric of the room, like the furniture. So if you had a so if there was a sofa here after it'd been on for say an hour, mm -hmm the actual material that the sofa's made is also warmed up, which is actually really intriguing. Yeah, the, the, the best one is the bed in the evening on a cold day when, right. when your bed is warm. And if you've got your bed clothes on there as well, they're toasty to put on. Right. Uh, so even when we put them on a normal ceiling height, which is about 2.4 metres, the floor actually starts to warm as well. Wow. So we see a good few degrees changes in, in the flooring. So the carpets or the tiles aren't cold. They actually absorb the heat as well. Right. And infrared works by bouncing off the energy until it can be absorbed by something. So nothing is wasted. Everything is, is put somewhere eventually and used. So in your mind then, Matt, what does the the, the building of the future look like in the UK, the future home? Well, we've seen the government push towards uh, a more passive building, so higher levels of insulation, which means we actually need less heating, which of course is much more energy efficient. It'll probably be triple glazed to keep that heating in and to make the use of the heat from the sun to actually heat the, the building as well. And a complete control system op operates the temperature of the building, but also things like the air within the building as well. So it'll have an MVHR system probably to clean and scrub the air so we don't have to open the windows, right. especially for people that are near to busy roads as well. They'll be able to keep clean air in, in the property and cycle that. Uh, the water system will be exactly smart, so you can choose every 1% of the hot water in there. It'll be run by probably by solar and by battery, which will be charged on the off-peak tariffs to keep the energy prices down. So it's just everything takes control within what we are doing for every room, for every space, just cleaner and greener. You know, I can, I can imagine being very obsessed with watching my energy usage and going, I can heat, oh, this room's yeah. warm and I barely, you know. It, the, the cost savings over the lifetime of the building are going to be huge. Yeah, right? and the, the Apple feedback actually, it gives you a, a daily and a weekly and a monthly uh, feedback of when the actual energy's come on. Right. So you can see when it's been used. Uh, what it's been doing, what's the temperature outside been doing as well in comparison. Right. Um, so the, the app is constantly developing, the tech is developing within that as well. So you will get direct feedback on what right. that room is doing. But the motion sensor is just a, a really clever way of just saying we don't need to touch that app anymore. Yeah. When, once the system's set up, we know if someone goes to bed at a certain time, we can pre eat that room for, for that if we needed to. Right. Or if we, we say, okay, this is our base rate temperature of 14, 15 degrees when it's not being used. Uh, if someone walks into that room, within a couple of minutes, we can say, okay, turn the heater on and start warming to 19, 20, 21 degrees. Um, it just means that we don't have to mess with apps or control systems. Yeah. And in essence, our, our control system is invisible. Uh, there's a sensor that literally sits on the wall and the relays that control the power on and off is hidden in a few spur away from them. Right. So in essence, you don't see any of the system here that's just operated by you moving around the property. Right. That is amazing. It does sound incredible. Really good, Matt. I'm really impressed with what you've done. It's fan I can only wish Jigsaw the, the best success in the world and that millions of people install these in their homes. I mean, it would make a, if you think of it in sort of macro terms, mm -hmm. you know, if we were heating all our homes with these rather than gas boilers, mm -hmm. the savings in this country would be phenomenal. It's, it's like LEDs in a way. It's a similar thing, isn't it? It would, be, it would make a really big difference. Fantastic talking to you. Thank you so much for, for coming along today. And that's all we've got time for on Fully Charged Plus. All the links to Jigsaw's uh, work will be in the description underneath this video, as will all the other links that we might want to put there, like Patreon, for example. And of course, I'd love to encourage you to subscribe to Fully Charged Plus so you can see lots more amazing things that we come across around the world. But that's it. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching.